The word malaria comes from the Latin for bad air, because physicians used to think the disease was caused by toxic vapors rising from marshes. But malaria isn't caused by vapors, or a bacteria, or a virus. It's caused by a tiny parasite, one that stows away in the salivary glands of a female mosquito. And when that mosquito bites a person, the parasite invades the body, causing headaches and fevers that can be fatal if left untreated. When another mosquito drinks an infected person's blood, some of the parasites can hitch a ride to their next host. Europeans had no defense against malaria until the 1600s when a Jesuit priest in Peru encountered cinchona, a medicinal plant used by the native people. Its bark, ground up, could ward off malaria, and some claimed it could do much more. But this quinine, as it was called, was extremely bitter, so British troops in India mixed it with carbonated water, sugar, lime, and alcohol, creating the gin and tonic. In the 20th century, scientists began to develop anti-malarial drugs, some based on the chemical structure of quinine. And the drugs worked for a while. Then the parasites began to evolve resistance, first in Southeast Asia, then in South America, and then Africa. Back in 1962, as the Vietnam War escalated, North Vietnamese fighters started dying of drug-resistant malaria. And Mao demanded that Chinese scientists solve the problem. They studied ancient texts and thousands of traditional Chinese herbs and found that an extract of sweet wormwood, a plant that had been used in Chinese medicinal teas for 2,000 years, could kill malaria parasites. Mao scientists used the plant to develop artemisinin, a new drug that worked faster than anything doctors had tried before. But because of distrust between China and the West, decades passed before it was widely used. Today, it is a major defense against malaria throughout the world. In 2008, though, scientists reported cases of resistance to artemisinin in Cambodia, and then Thailand and Myanmar. Experts say it will be at least five years before the next drug comes along.